Senator Miriam Blanchard appointed Minister for Public Works and Ports. EWP statement says resignation is the only honorable action for public officials facing allegations of misconduct and the Exceptional Women Award conferred upon three prominent Dominicans on International Women's Day. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details coming up. And first stop in the new Senator Honorable Miriam Blanchard has been appointed Minister for Public Works and Ports. The Office of the Prime Minister announced Tuesday that Senator Miriam Blanchard had been appointed Minister for Public Works and Ports in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution of the Commonwealth of Dominica with effect from March 7, 2016. The Office of the Prime Minister wishes to announce further that the portfolio of postal services has been allocated to Honorable Justina Charles, Minister for Youth, Sports, Culture and Constituency Empowerment, effective March 7, 2016. In other news now, the political leader of the United Workers' Party has released a statement Tuesday stating that the resignation from office, at least while the matter is before the court, is the only honorable course of action available to public officials facing allegations of serious inappropriate behavior. Over the past week, three prominent Dominicans have been charged in connection with allegations of serious inappropriate behavior towards a minor. The UWP leader's statement reads, the allegations have been denied by the UWP team member, but the individual has been charged under the Sexual Offenses Act. The statement further indicates that resignation is precisely what the UWP team expects of the accused member. Mr. Linton says alternatively, the appropriate organs of the party will be engaged to act decisively in the public's interest and for the general well-being of the party. Mr. Linton's statement reads, on behalf of the leadership of the UWP Team Dominica, I apologize for the widespread disappointment, hurt and discomfort among nationals at home and abroad caused by this most regrettable development. The statement goes on to say, if we don't give the complaints of abused children the importance they deserve in the judicial process, if we shut them down through payments to parents, if we intimidate them and trash their truth with legal technicalities, then the menace of child abuse will continue to wreak havoc without let or hindrance. A school principal and two nurses are among the women who received the Exceptional Women Award from the Bureau of Gender Affairs and Digicel as part of activities marking International Women's Day. Former director of the HIV AIDS Prevention Unit, Nurse Julie Frampton, principal of the Dominica Community High School, head of the Dominica Association of Teachers, Celia Nicholas, and Nurse Priscilla Prevo were recognized for the extraordinary achievements on Tuesday at a ceremony at Digicel's retail store. In her acceptance speech, Nicholas advised victims of sexual abuse that they should not be afraid to consult someone about the issue. And the individuals whom they have spoken to, as Tina said, it is not a beth. It is not anything to repeat to anyone. And maybe sometimes we are at fault because especially as teachers and principals of schools, we are treasure chests. We have a lot of secret hiding for a lot of people. And then sometimes when we see people posturing, sometimes we say, well, we should have the days of the Old Testament, that people should just fall. But we have to support the individuals, and we also have to support the perpetrators to get it right. Okay? That is very important. Nicholas has also cautioned men to take their responsibility seriously. Dominica is very small and we have too many instances of those personal crimes. Too many, too many, too many to be comfortable with, too many. And individuals whom you may see on the road who are gay, who are happy, some of them are hiding secrets and some of them cannot deal with them. And the acting director of the Bureau of Gender Affairs says there have been positive trends in advancement of women in key areas in Dominica. This, as the Bureau observed International Women's Day Tuesday, the acting director says women have made significant strides in leadership roles in Dominican society. As it relates to women involvement in leadership positions, um, we, we've seen a greater number of women aspiring to management positions, especially in the public service, um, like um, permanent secretaries, um, uh, managers of departments, and also even recently with our elections, we've seen this is a, a first where we have five female um, ministers. There is also a notable reduction in the poverty level and maternal mortality among women. 
obviously if you have a decrease in the poverty level then it means that you're also impacting on the lives of of women and children we saw in 2009 that there was a reduction in the poverty level and also in the indigent indigence level as well so if you have a decrease in poverty and women are the ones as a subgroup as a disadvantaged group um, then automatically you have some impact on the lives of women and their children. As it relates to maternal mortality, over the last six years we've seen a downward trend um, in maternal mortality and so the records indicate that there's less than 1% for at least the last six years. International Women's Day was celebrated under the theme Pledge for Parity. Still on International Women's Day, the Convent High School came on board to join the rest of the country in celebrating International Women's Day on Tuesday. The school held a special morning assembly where students were encouraged to become the chain they want to see. You should always think positively about yourselves. Always tell yourselves that you can do anything that you put your mind to and nothing, nothing is too great for you to accomplish. Even if you are still young, there is nothing that is, too, there is, nothing that is impossible for you to achieve in life. Today we're celebrating women and I want you all to understand that anything a man can do, you all can do it just as well or even better. Students were also urged to recognize the importance of family in society. When children show healthy development in spite of adversity, it is called resilience. And that is what our message is about. Young girls building a resilient society. Fostering resilience in young children requires strengthening of the family. How does this tie into gender parity? Gender parity is necessary to foster positive change so that odds for favorable development can be improved. Parents must teach values by first living those values. One of those values is gender equality. The recently formed group Women Helping Other Women encouraged the young ladies to respond to the call to assist each other. Our goal is to empower women, especially young women like you, students at the Convent High School. All women in Dominica qualify to be members, but we will call on you based on the task at hand. Be prepared to move on at short notice. Let us rock our color purple today, knowing that gender parity, equality, gets closer every day as we overcome our barriers. Our successes grow and multiply with hard work, dedication and blessings and protection of our God and eternal Father. Former students of the convent high school who went on to make significant contributions to society were recognized during Tuesday morning's assembly. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. Moving on to other news now, a two-day workshop to improve Dominica's position to implement CVQs nationwide gets underway on Wednesday. This forms part of government's continuous efforts to strengthen the Caribbean Vocation Qualification CVQ program. The Caribbean Association of National Training Authorities and the Dominica Technical and Vocational Education and Training Council have come on board for the hosting of the industry-led forum. The forum will bring to the attention of the private sector the new CARICOM-approved TVET strategy detailing the seven pillars upon which the region has agreed to build its TVET development agenda. The CVQ and its implication for strengthening the economic competitiveness of the region will be featured in this forum, giving industry leaders the opportunity to contribute to a progressive plan for its implementation in Dominica. Additionally, the forum will share the results of the CARICOM Trade and Competitiveness Project, CTPC, specific to Dominica. The government of Dominica partnered with the CARICOM Education for Employment for this two-day sensitization program scheduled for the 9th and 10th of March. You're watching Channel 5 News, coming up, an option for victims of sexual assault.
Thank you for staying with us. Children of the Pitit Savan Primary School will be able to utilize a fully equipped multi-purpose room come next month. This as one of the projects of the Rotary Club of Dominica nears completion. The Rotary Club of Dominica partnered with the Sanders Foundation, Sanders International, to retrofit a, a, a classroom at the, at the school that they are now occupying, the Petit Savant students are now occupying. On the 9th of March, we'll be opening a multi-purpose room for the students of the Petit Savant school. That multi-purpose room will consist of a computer section and a well-equipped library. Another project to benefit school children severely affected by the passage of Tropical Storm Erica will target pupils of the Kulibistri Primary School. The Rotary Club of Dominica partnered with the Rotary Club of Ottawa South to purchase and equip the Kulibistri School Primary School Library. So very soon the funds are here and we are working with the Jays Bookstore and Premier to purchase the books and 15 um, tablets for the students and also a, a, another component is a small um, project in which they'll be assisting weaker um, students in the school. So that is one way after Tropical um, Storm Erica we mobilized and got funds to assist. Rotary is a global network of volunteers who share passion for enhancing communities and improving lives around the world. And an expert in civil and architectural engineering is underscoring the need to develop a hydromet network here, which can serve as an early warning system during storm-related conditions. A professor of engineering at the University of Wyoming has been studying factors linked to the island's vulnerability to disasters. Dr. Ogden's latest survey post-tropical storm Erica was done on 16 of the island's rivers. His findings presented on Friday will guide future decisions on the building of roads, bridges and houses. And now that we have marched up a lot of these rivers, I think the crews that, that worked with me from lands and surveys and from public works know where some really good stream gauging sites are. And we also saw that after the disaster that contractors could drive their tracked vehicles considerable distances up those rivers. So when it comes to building gauging infrastructure, access I don't think is a problem. Particularly if we're gonna have an effective warning system, we need to have the weirs need to be upriver, far from the coast, uh, far enough to give us sufficient warning that there's a flood wave coming. And the rain gauges need to be upstream of that or uphill of that on the island so that they uh, record rainfall in time to provide some warning. And back now to some more stories dealing with International Women's Day. The Dominican National Council of Women is playing its part to achieve one of the world's sustainable development goals. On Tuesday, Dominica joined the world in celebrating International Women's Day. The theme for the day is Pledge for Parity, while the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal is to attain increased equality for women by the year 2030, hence the campaign Planet 5050 by 2030, Step It Up for Gender Equality. We have come thus far in Dominica. We have achieved at least some of the priorities that we would like to but we are still way behind. You earlier mentioned that there are some areas which could use improvements. Could you give us an idea of what areas those are? There are still a lot of hurdles and a lot of setbacks when it comes to Dominican women. We have been struggling hard to fight and to get things in place for domestic violence. David says International Women's Day is set aside to observe the success of women despite the continuing obstacles they face. That's why we look at sustainable development and women livelihood as a priority. The 8th of March, International Women's Day, is just one day out of the year. What more does DNCW have planned as they continue to empower women in the Dominican society? Oh, we, we have a lot planned. Sometimes we, we listen to persons say that we do not do enough. And that's why we are thanking those who come on board and to champion the cause. Today we are also celebrating the effectiveness of the enforcement of a helpline where we have some women in the forefront to assist the, pro the public when there is a problem. And victims of sexual assault now have a helpline available to them 24-7. 
The Dominican National Council of Women and Lifeline Ministries have partnered to make this possible. The initiative was launched on Tuesday to coincide with International Women's Day. The service was established through a grant of a little over 25,000 Canadian dollars from the Canada Fund for local initiatives. It's part of our program of reaching out to people who are stuck in difficult relationships or who are experiencing abuse. Um, not just children who are being abused actually, but also uh, we know that there are some women who are in need of assistance um, and there are also some male victims too. So anybody who's in need of assistance will be able to call this line and we'll be able to direct them to the best place to get help for their problem. So we're not actually providing the assistance, we are providing the information that the person needs and the support and the courage to make a report. 20 volunteers were trained to operate the service. Who will be operating the phones, responding to people. Um, it's an anonymous line, so it's not one that where people have to give their name. Um, if they want to, then they can, but they don't have to. Um, if they need a victim supporter, they can also ask for that and be referred for help for somebody to help them in person if they want to make a report. Um, We've also done seven different outreach meetings in different districts. So lots of people have seen me making noise in the district, talking about um, why they need to recognise when abuse is going on. From March 8, the public will be able to call 1-800-744-3629 to speak to a responder. That's news. Sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. Hello everyone and here are your sporting highlights. First up in sports, home advantage favored Dominica Grammar School as they made their dominance known to the Pierre Charles Secondary Girls with a 114 to 13 point hammering. Kayla Watson stole a spotlight with 52 points while Vanelsia John supported with 36. The Secondary Schools Basketball League continues Wednesday between the girls of Dominica State College and Northeast Comprehensive at the DGS Hard Court. The game is carded for 3 p.m. In cricket, West Indies have selected opening batsman Evan Lewis to replace Lendl Simmons for the World T20 in India. Simmons was ruled out for the tournament last week because of a back injury. Lewis's overall T20 record stands at 1,044 runs in 34 innings at an average of 31.63. The West Indies team is scheduled to play warm-up matches against India and Australia on March 10 and 13 and will play their first match of the World T20 against England in Mumbai on March 16. Bouncing in some basketball, the Dominica Amateur Basketball Association will hold its 2016 President's Cup at the Massac Hard Court this week. The first game is carded for Wednesday between D Tread Blazers and Kyrie FM Old School at 7 p.m. The second, also on Monday, will be Elijah Law Chambers Thunderers versus Fast Cash Prowlers at 9 p.m. The final will be played Friday between winners of Game 1 and 2. Starting time, 8 p.m. Still in sports. Coordinator of the Child Abuse Prevention Unit, Gemma Azi Luis, says sporting leaders have great influence on children and while they could use their position for good, some misuse it. Her comments come on the heels of a fair play workshop put on by the WICB and UNICEF for physical education teachers. It should be noted that sporting organizations have a powerful and positive influence on young people. It provides opportunities for enjoyment, achievement and growth. It also develops valuable qualities such as self-esteem, leadership, and teamwork. You as leaders have an enormous power and influence over young people. However, there are ample opportunities for leaders to manipulate this situation. Sporting clubs and organizations can provide an environment well suited for pedophiles. Louis says it is essential that sporting leaders be trained so they could join in the fight against child abuse. It is essential that the welfare of your, all young people be put as pri priority and there is the adoption practice that supports, protects and empowers the children. Hence, it is essential that all persons in this speciality be trained in the area of child protection. In netball, 
President of the 2016 Big Edge Financial Express League, Alice John Jules, reminds athletes that discipline is a vital part of playing any sport, but more specifically netball. Her comments come at the opening of the league. Last year, we had difficulties in officiating. A lot of times, players disrespect the officials. And we want to see a difference this year in the discipline of the teams. You could be a good player and you're ill-disciplined, that makes you look ugly. And nobody will want to take you on a national team. John Jules says she's optimistic about the formation of the under-23 team and urged players to do their best to gain selection to compete in the upcoming regional competition. We have the under-23 team to look forward to because that's the only team we have participating in any regional tournament because the Caribbean Netball Association don't host any regional tournaments anymore, just the under-16 tournament. But we have the OECS under-23 tournament which we participate in and we look forward in bringing young blood into the team. So go out there and play your best so that you could be selected to be on that team or on that training squad. In primary school sports, the second day of the intermediate round in the NBD Primary School's Boys Football Championships will continue Wednesday at two venues. At Lindo Park, the Maho, Caleblora, Grand Bay, Newtown and Goodwill Primary Schools along with the Pioneer Preparatory School will convene for play. Meantime, the Savan Pai, W.S. Stevens, Santover, Tibo, Sinico, and Grand Four Primary Schools will do battle at the Casa Bruce playing field. Matches are scheduled for 10 a.m. The top two teams from each of the four groups will advance to the quarterfinals, which are carded for March 15. In more cricket, the West Indies women will do battle with South Africa when the teams meet up for their third T20 on Wednesday. Sunday ended their second T20 where West Indies women had a 45-run win over South Africa. Stephanie Taylor scored 63, while Stacey and King assisted with 24. The South African team replied with 98 all out. No bats woman was able to top Marizan's caps 17. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. Coming up next, a look at your weather report. Hello, good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I will be your presenter for this evening, Farah Rock Career. Generally fair skies we experienced today. Let's take a look now at some earlier infrared satellite imagery and what it showed is a frontal boundary across the northern portion of the Lesser Antilles, which resulted in generally cloudy skies across the northern portion of the islands. Earlier visible satellite imagery showed the Cloud bands associated with this the frontal boundary across the northern portion of the islands and earlier radar imagery indicated shower activity associated with the frontal boundary across the Leeward Islands. The weather tonight is expected to be increasingly cloudy with some showers and the weather conditions tomorrow will be mostly cloudy with showers. The marine conditions tomorrow will be moderate to rough and waves are expected to be up to 10 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers please do exercise caution. What can we expect for the next three days? Tomorrow, Wednesday, mostly cloudy skies with some showers. Thursday, mostly cloudy skies with morning showers. And on Friday, mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers. And breezy conditions will be maintained throughout the three-day period. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, as the frontal boundary will continue to deep further southwards, mostly cloudy conditions with some scattered showers are expected for most of the islands of the Lesser Antilles. On the international scene, partly cloudy skies are expected for New York, Miami and the Caracas. Cloudy conditions with some rain in London and beautiful clear skies for Beijing. The sun will rise tomorrow at 6.17 a.m. and will set at 6.15 p.m. 
please feel free to visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call the weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us tomorrow evening for our next weather broadcast. Thank you. To end the news, the headlines again. Senator Miriam Blanchard appointed Minister for Public Works and Ports. UWP statement says resignation is the only honorable action for public officials facing allegations of misconduct and the Exceptional Women Award conferred upon three prominent Dominicans on International Women's Day. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also check out our past newscasts on our YouTube page. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. Thank you for watching. Join us tomorrow.